Hello everyone, welcome back to Optimal EV. In this video, we're going to be doing a build guide and rundown on the all new 2023 or 2024 Aptera. If you haven't already, please make sure to like and subscribe and drop a comment down below if you like these kinds of videos or you have an idea of some other type of video you'd like us to do. Yeah, so the Aptera, uh, you know, this is one of those vehicles that there's really no estimated ETA, although they do have a you know, build guide and a delivery process or reservation process. Um, we don't know when this vehicle will actually be coming. It really just depends on when Aptera actually ramps up production. So we're looking right now, probably sometime in 2024, if you were to put a reservation in right now, but it could be later as well. So we're going to jump into the builder. Let's do it. All right, so here we are on Aptera's website where you will see the first look of the vehicle. Now, if you haven't seen this one before, uh, it's pretty unbelievable. So before we even get in anything, I'm just gonna go through a couple of the pictures. It is nice that their site allows to show multiple pictures of the vehicle. Yeah, this might be the most unique electric car we've ever reviewed or you know, arguably is on the market. I'm sure there are going to be some upcoming ones soon, just like this one, but this one's pretty dope. Yeah, and notice it's a three-wheeler. So it's it looks like a egg, bubble thing i don't know how to explain it but yeah. definitely really futuristic it almost gives like jetson vibes yeah for sure it definitely reminds me of some type of spaceship i know for a fact if you're someone who really likes attention even if it's not a unbelievable sports car if you drive by someone in this everyone will be looking at you especially in the first like year of deliveries oh for sure um, it'd be pretty cool to have and uh you know to on the jump you'll see twenty nine thousand nine hundred. now that's for yeah. the build that we have it's actually 25 9 for the lowest battery size and uh, when I say build that we have, the reason that there is a build already done is because I actually put a reservation in on it. So yeah, hundred dollars, why not? Let's see what happens. Hopefully uh, one day I'll actually receive it. But uh, you know, we'll never know. It's exciting, <laughs> a new car potentially in the order uh, down the line. So we'll have to definitely give you guys a full on review once that car is delivered when it is. Yeah. At the top right here, you can see that the base stats are a 250 mile range on this battery selection, a zero to 60 of 3.5 seconds, which is pretty quick. And that is on the all wheel drive. So you'll see two seconds slower on the front wheel drive system. But again, all wheel drive does make a huge difference on the speed. So that's what we went for. Yep. There are solar panels that are also built into this, which is available to see on one of the bottom gallery pictures. It does increase your range by about 40 miles per day as it sits out in the sun. And you'll see that will change as you click through, which we'll show you once we get down there. But we're going to start where we always start. And that is on the color. So um, I went with the white. I think the white looks really awesome on this vehicle. It really makes the rest of the black and like solar panels pop out. But also I was really, you know, torn because the black also looks pretty. It pretty looks dandy. stealthy. I really love mm -hmm. like a stealthy black color on this type of car. Yeah, I wish it was just full black. Even if you could do like the tail lights, and obviously for legal reasons you can't, but yeah, it looked pretty sweet if everything was black. And out. then the first option here we have is kind of just like a silver. So there's silver, white, and black. And then the very last option allows you to really customize it. I believe mm -hmm. they're allowing for you to just pick whatever color you want. Although yeah. it's obviously a $1,500 custom paint job. Yeah. And uh, we've seen other companies do this like Audi, Mercedes, BMW. A lot of the German brands like to give you an option for a custom color or individual color as some brands call it. So uh, definitely an, a cool option. I would love to see a really rare color on the road in this vehicle. Yeah. It'd make it even more eye catching. So me too. And then you'll see our, our miles option. So something we haven't seen before is this thousand mile range being hit. Now, this is nuts. That's ridiculous. Yeah. We don't know if that's going to be a real world test, but um, the fact they're even saying that shows some real confidence from Aptera. The closest thing to that is the Lucid, which was just over 500 miles. And this is double our, that. Yeah. This <laughs> is advertising twice the range. Yeah. And one thing that's cool is they really give you like, they lay out the options for the battery sizes. So if you actually select the middle picture here, you're going to see the one battery pack. And as you select higher, it adds on batteries to it. So right. it's pretty cool. They give you a visual of how it will look. And um, price wise, you're going to jump around $20,000 on the max size battery. We thought that the best sweet spot was the 400 mile range. Yep. Um, just increasing it $4,000 because I mean, I don't think you need anything over 400, especially on a little car like this. Yeah. It definitely depends on what you would buy this car for. This probably wouldn't be most people's like daily driver. So I think if it's kind of like, you know, maybe a beach car or a car that you just take around the town, you're not going any far distances with, uh, 400 is plenty. You yeah. know, maybe you have to go, you just don't feel like charging as much. That would be the reason. But yeah, you could even get away with the 250 for sure. Easily. I mean, it, just because you'd be such a cheap vehicle yep. at 25.9 there. Yeah. Um, and if you go the cheapest model, or the 400 mile model and just max out the solar panels, 
if the car's outside for you know most of the day, you shouldn't really have to charge the car basically ever. Yeah, it would be pretty insane if you could just if you left it outside all the time and you're really getting those forty miles every day that you might end up never having to charge this thing. I know that forty miles a day, if your commute's small, you'll never charge. Uh, unfathomable. Um, next, you're gonna see where you can select the panels. So as you click through, it will take off. The grayed out area is gonna be the non panels. The green is where the solar panels will be. And then if you just push all, then the whole roof and uh, front back will get it. $900, not really bad for solar panels. Yeah, I mean, it, I don't know. If you click on the smaller amounts of panels, you'll notice that it does change how many miles you are getting per mm -hmm. day per charge. So if that 40 miles is something that's gonna push you over never having to charge it and that's what you're looking for, obviously you should include all the panels. Yeah, so 16 to 22 to 34 to 40. Right. Now, that's pretty cool because you really get to like customize. Let's say you know what your commute is every day. You can customize it to fit that exactly, right. which is really nice. Let's just hope that they're actually accurate with what they're telling you on the recharge. Yeah. Um, I think they actually posted, if you can go check out on Aptera's website, um, they show where the hot zones are for uh, solar charging. So, you know, depending on what state you're in, you can check it out and uh, they have different like levels of heat signature there. Uh, next, we have our front wheel drive and all wheel drive system, which we briefly went over. You'll see that it's $2,500. Now they also made another visual for this, where if I deselect the all wheel, it'll take away the green on the rear, uh, you know, one wheel. Yeah. So it's uh, still all wheel drive, but three wheels. So pretty cool. Moving on to the interior, we have three different options here with the starting off with like this kind of dark blue. I think it, it looks black in the picture, but the bottom right kind of indicates that it's really just a, a dark blue. And then the next option is like a light whitish gray with hints of beige that's our favorite yeah we love that contrast in there and then the last option is black and orange and as you can see the accents on the back of the seat i think this looks super sharp yeah, this looks does. really clean it does look cool um but you know to i each like the own. white like just in the middle part yeah i was gonna say some comments on the interior it's extremely simple the mm. seats don't look overly comfortable they're pretty thin but obviously, if this isn't your daily driver, you're probably not going to be spending too much time in there. You're not going to be doing a lot of long-distance driving, probably. Mm. The dash itself, very simple, very clean. You know, a little small touch that I noticed just from clicking through, if you look at the steering wheel stitching, if you click through the different ones, you'll see that it actually changes the steering wheel with the uh, matching the interior. Wow. Very cool. Yeah. Um, and then also, you have the custom color. I'm surprised it's only $900. For custom interior. Yeah, yeah. I guess maybe they keep it black or like one of these colors, and then they paint the back piece maybe uh, just to keep it cheaper for them. But right. if they actually do change the color of the seat that would be for $900, insane. that's really, really good. That's yeah. insanely cheap. So definitely uh, have to look into that a little more. And you'll see that all you have to do is save and continue and put $100 on your uh, reservation, which I already paid for. Just going to go through these pictures one more time. The rear looks super slick. I love how it really just resembles like a ship in the back. It's it's so sleek. It is. I, I really, we watched a couple videos just uh, on, you know, people driving the car, the prototypes of it. And it does look like it's going to be a little uncomfortable. Of a yeah, ride, it, but... it's probably going to be a little bumpy. Like I said, yeah. I don't think this is something that you should take to and from work every single day unless you aren't going on the highway because it doesn't really seem like it can handle a lot of big bumps and you know rough roads which yeah. we're used to up here in the northeast 100 percent. and one thing that i noticed that i don't know if it will be street legal for the united states is see these screens here yeah so those screens are for the uh side mirrors so they're just uh, digital screens that show the the camera on the side right now i know that other brands tried doing this uh i think it might have been tesla for at start they tried doing that in other countries, but they weren't allowed to do it here. So uh, the Cybertruck, another one had like yep. no mirrors I on it. I do remember that. So I don't know. I wonder if that's going to stick, but maybe they can get some kind of regulation passed or uh, an exception or something. But And then that very it. last picture, it does show you kind of like a, a center console view into the back. Uh, doesn't really look like there's too much back there for storage. Maybe you could just throw something back there, maybe some clothes or a backpack mm -hmm. if that's what you're doing. A little door handle. It's kind of like a oh yeah like strap. A, yep. Uh, yeah, I think it's pretty cool. The seats don't look the most comfortable at all. I feel like it's something with the slope of the headrest that right. kind of makes it, it come just out look like flat. Right. <laughs> um, and then another thing, just personally, I wasn't a huge fan of the steering wheel. I think that piece in the middle like kind of pops out a little bit too much. Hmm, okay. But besides that, I think the car looks really, really unique. I yeah, mean, I don't mind it at all. I, I think the whole thing looks really good. And for the price, I mean, this is a pretty cheap EV, especially if you take all of the lower options across the board. So maybe this is the right car for you if you want to just, you know, ha go have some fun with a new EV. Yeah, and uh, it'd definitely be cool to pull up next to someone in this little spaceship and, you know, 
race some kind of expensive German car and beat them because your car goes zero to 60 in 3.5 seconds. Yeah. That'd so, be really funny. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing the top speed is, I think, uh, it maxed out at 110. I think I saw 110 or 120. Not too bad. If you look, it's very similar to what the I3 was. Yeah. Something that was a fun around the town car that, you know, obviously this is a different level, but similar kind of sizing and unique styling to it. So for sure, if you guys are interested in purchasing one again, a hundred dollars gets you, you know, an account and a, a reservation. So you'll get on that list in line for, for this vehicle. I know Aptera has probably a little bit over 20,000 reservations already, which is really awesome. Um, we've seen people like Lucid who actually had less than that. So right. probably cause it's a cheaper car and sure. a cheap reservation. Yeah. So that about wraps up our build guide and rundown on the futuristic Aptera. Yeah, I'm, I put one in. I put an order in. I got a reservation. Hoping it comes in sometime in 2023 or 2024. I'm really excited to drive it. If you guys have any questions or you know any concerns about this vehicle, please leave them down in the comment section below. Make sure to like and subscribe, of course, and we will see you in the future.